I've been told you can't hear a word you were saying at the back. There's some seats available at the front for anybody who'd like to have seats. Can I move up and anybody try and speak off to the front? Thanks, Johnny. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be saying here tonight, um, but Johnny asked me, um, I was aware that this event was coming up and Jessica has kindly uh, come back to us here again. Um, I've just got my way home from the Mart. <coughs> uh, we had our first organic sale today in Drum Shambo, uh, sold 120 cattle and uh, <coughs> I didn't get very far, but some of those cattle are now in Tipperary, Meath, Wexford, Kilkenny, in different parts of the country. and. Uh, by sort of two or three weeks' time, some of that meat will be on uh, plates in Belgium, France, Germany, the UK, um, Scandinavia, and Italy. And so I suppose I'm just trying to paint the picture that <clears throat> from the point of view of Leitrim Organic Farmers and generally farmers here in the county, you know, having a pristine environment uh, in which to farm is absolutely critical. Because, <clears throat> you know, when you go through the county today, farmers are looking the last two or three weeks, they've had a, a spell of glorious weather and they're struggling now to try and catch up with putting out muck and I'm sure if you get a nice palm coming across the ditch, you'll be wondering what it's from, well it's probably some farmer who's finally getting his, his farmyard manure slurry out. And <clears throat> as well as that, he's out trying to cut rushes that have grown for the last two years and haven't been able to, to get to. So it's a real kind of, you know, opportunity window now for, for the farmers to... Uh, yeah, to make a bit of progress. <clears throat> but I did hear, overheard a couple of things on the mark today which were interesting. And one of them was that farmers in Ireland are exposed to have, have a debt burden of four and a half billion euro. And I thought to myself, well, that's an incredible statistic. But uh, <clears throat> quite a bit of that accounts from the, the property boom and the exposure that we all had and um, uh, <clears throat> investing in property. And farmers were no different from that. Um, but in general around here, uh, those kind of figures don't make any sense because most farmers are living on quite meagre incomes and they're supplementing their farming through off farming activity. <clears throat> I'm farming roughly 80 acres of land in Roscommon and I manage the Leitrim Organic Farmers and I don't think I would be farming, only that I have some off farm income as well. So I think the whole picture here in Leitrim is that you need to have a mix of incomes in any household in which to survive. And right now, with the lack of foreign direct investment, I mean, you're looking at some of like what we looked at here, culture, uh, food tourism, culture, and all of these things that bring people to this area. And <clears throat> farmers who come in here from Kildare, Wicklow, and the Midlands to buy cattle because, you know, they, the cattle that they get out of here are the best there are. So I'm very keen, as a farmer, as somebody involved here in the community, to make sure that we can keep bringing the produce from here up the value chain. And certainly from what I've seen of fracking, <clears throat> there's absolutely no way that that can happen. You're, if you accept fracking, you accept that you're going to live in an industrialised zone with industrialised farming and industrialised food and industrial contamination. <clears throat> so, you know, I've met nobody yet that thinks that's a good panacea for Leitrim going forward. The, the problem, the main problem is <clears throat> that there isn't enough people on the farming side of the house actually stating, you know, on that what the panacea is going forward. And, you know, uh, without naming anything, the usual suspects who re uh, re represent farmers are keeping very quiet on this. And I still throw the challenge out to them to come out and make a statement, you know, on this issue. One that is kind of bold, will take a little bit of courage, and might actually mean they have to stand out from the crowd a little bit. And I will give one... <laughs> and this week, one farmer in Leitrim stood out from the crowd. He's away in Austria at the moment. His name is Raymond Gilmartin. And he stood out by actually defending incomes here in Leitrim. And by sort of saying, well, hold on, you know... Uh, the, the farming organisation I'm a part of is not about the 1% of the elite. It's about, really, it's about representing the mass of farmers, you know, on that, who are very much small-scale farmers in this county. So, in fact, all farmers in Leitrim, believe it or not, are recognised as smallholders. And uh, it's an interesting term, but um, 
in the scheme of things, they are indeed small owners by virtue. They may have a very large hill, but their income is relatively small. So I suppose what I would be saying is that really, I, if fracking comes in here, <clears throat> I won't be here, and many of the people in this room involved in farming and tourism won't be here. And I, I, that's, not, that's completely unacceptable. It really is. And <clears throat> I listened to what, what I heard Pat Rabbit talking about, and I've heard different politicians and so on, you know, say, talking about defending... Uh, you know, this area against fracking. But, you know, the licenses have been applied for, the process is on its way. And, you know, my experience, and I think, you know, if you look at, at a very large super tanker, if you apply the brakes on a very large super tanker, it takes it four or five miles before it starts to pull up. So I think the tanker is out in the sea now, you know, and that it's well revved up. The question is, is will we be able to get the brakes on quick enough before it rams into the quay? And so I think that's really the analogy I would paint. I'm not, I don't know as much about fracking as people here, um, but I do know really what's worth looking after. And until this techno, you know, and, and right now this process of gas shale fracking, there's enough evidence <clears throat> that from what we can see, what we've listened, we've listened to a range of academics, farmers, people from different parts of the globe, that would say that you need to adopt the precautionary principle. And certainly, when Helmut spoke to us in, in uh, Berry's Tavern in Rumshambo, he painted the picture clearly in Germany. And seeing that we depend so much on Germany for everything and uh, for bailouts, etc., maybe we should just simply look to good practice in Germany and adopt that and to heck with the rest. So thank you very much.